The following is a presentation of the Western Ontario Super Hockey League. Yes, back here on the uh, Western Ontario Super Hockey League podcast season uh, preview show. Uh, Andrew Rogers, the host of the podcast. Uh, Jamie Petrie has been kind enough to rejoin us as he's switched shirts and uh, he's sporting a nice little Irish, uh, strapper fighting Irish apparel that uh, looks pretty snazzy on him. So, uh, Jamie, yeah, we want to talk about Stratford Irish. And uh, again, we appreciate you coming on and, and discussing them with us. Uh, I, I don't know how you would classify year one for Stratford. I mean, could have been a kind of a whole hum win loss record, but I thought overall as a whole, you guys played pretty well. Uh, you know, you end up winning a couple of games against Alveson and run into a really tough opponent in Alora. How would you sum up the season? Well, I think if every team sums up their season where it's got to be a championship banner or bust, you're going to be a lot of teams that, that feel they had a, an unsuccessful year. It was never about that for us. And I'm, um, I'm competitive as, any person you'll meet and, right. and, and I don't, I don't hide that, but, but it was never about that. Um, there, we started something in Stratford that hasn't been done since 1981, 82 in this age group. Um, there was a few checklists that, that we wanted to, uh, that we wanted to check off. We wanted to have a competitive team. We did. Uh, mm -hmm. We wanted to uh, have a loyal fan base. We did. We wanted to, to do stuff in our community and get entrenched. We did. Um, you know, we wanted corporate sponsorship or partnership with local uh, um, establishments in town and businesses. We did. Um, we wanted a, a core of players to come back and, and be proud of what we started. We did. So there's lots of good stuff. Obviously, there's stuff that we have to work on, but but we're real happy with 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 our hockey club. And and I know that you were you would ask coming um further on but i'll get right into it you know we had some players that never played this 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 caliber mm -hmm. and we and we had some players with you know tier two junior a major a we had junior b we had some junior c players you know and and, and the first couple of games it was it was interesting but then we went on a run i think we were seven and three for a while uh we had just beat Alora seven three we had beat tilsonberg back to back and then you know what happened you know, right. we, we lost our we lost our goalie to a scholarship, um, arguably the best goalie in the league. Um, wonderful young man. We lost two players to to Germany and, and then we lost another player to uh, to a team in the States. This isn't um, poor Jamie or poor fighting Irish, but it's, right. it's factual. We, we did not rebound after that. Right. Um, the, to me, the most important um uh, position in hockey is goalie, no matter what division. It could be beer league, it could be NHL, whatever. Um, yes, you need other stuff, but but we did not rebound after uh, we lost we lost Nathan Turkey and right. and, and, it, and, it, and it stuck. Could could we have won the cup? I don't see why not. But, right. But realistically, we would like to have given a a, a better uh, a better showing against Alora, or mm -hmm. if we would have played Tilsonburg, whatever. So uh, I, I won't I won't beat this to death. But, you know, we, we've um, we've did some changes and, and, and we've rebounded and and we'll go from there. Right. No, absolutely. I agree with you. And, uh, I mean, yeah, there was a lot of good things. I think, yeah, I, I think you hit the nail on the head, though. I mean, you know, consistency is everything. Commitment is everything. Obviously, you can only control what you can control. If guys have to leave for better opportunities, kudos to them for earning that opportunity. Um, you know, obviously, yeah, I think you would agree with this. If you have Torquia from the beginning of the year and all throughout, I think it's a whole different story for how your team ends up. 100%. It, 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 and, and we would. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm on, a, on a sidebar, you know, as a league or as, as a team, and some other teams have the same thing, mm -hmm. to, to help guys 
get to that next level. And, and, and listen, the, the whole compliment goes to the players. Sure. Did I envision that? No. But to send a couple of guys to Germany that we had a, a small hand in mm-hmm. to, to Nathan Dorothy getting a scholarship. And it, it's awesome. It's yeah. awesome for him. And again, other teams had it too, but it, again, speaks volumes of the caliber of, um, of the players, but also of our league that Absolutely. some players are getting other opportunities after playing in this league. Pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, no, absolutely. It, it's always nice to be able to get into a league, especially knowing that there is possible room for further improvement or, or tougher competition or just growth in general in your game and your league and, and as a hockey player in general, um, and that it doesn't just stop at this league and that's it, that's it, that's the ceiling. Um, in terms of last year, yeah, you got you had some standouts that I was really impressed by. One of them was Ray Robbins. Uh, he had an unbelievable year. He's an unbelievable hockey player and an even better guy. Uh, speak to him a little bit, if you could, and just uh, how impressed you were by his play. Yeah, I'd, I'd heard lots of great things about Ray Robbins, Robbie Razor, whatever you want to call him. Um, I'd only seen him play a couple of times in junior. Um kind of a Swiss army knife can, can play everywhere. He played a little bit of deep first, played forward there. There's the perfect example of when you read a hockey player's bio, um, you know, and, and he hadn't played major Ray and he hadn't played in Europe and, and so on and so forth. He, he had played junior B and, 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 and a bit of C, but his compete meter is, is, is off the charts. He's Dr. Red Bull. Um, you know, he, he won co uh, co-player outstanding of the year for a reason. And um, his energy never stops. He, he's got um, uh, high skill, high compete, um, and, and it's wonderful. And some players progress later in life. Um, you know, he was, a, he, was a, he was a good junior player for sure. Um, could have played a bit higher, but he, he, I put him up against anyone in our league um, that has played pros, played this, played that. Um, he's, and he's, he's a wonderful young man. And, and um, uh, you see the stir that 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 uh, uh, our, our cup or stirs the drink in our for our team pretty much <laughs> yeah. pretty much you know he he's not a he's a captain of our hockey club doesn't doesn't speak a ton uh, he's one of those ones and there's different ones the loud ones or or the guys that let their um, their game speak volumes he's, he's a little bit of combination of both but but he's certainly his motor is always going. Yeah, he's just a great dude, and I've like I say, I haven't talked to him a bunch of times. He's just an outstanding individual, and obviously his game reflects how good of a person he is. It's always nice when you have that, uh, you know, that both on on either end. Um, yep. Was there anybody from your team that surprised you, I guess, last year in terms of like, oh, I didn't expect this out of them or that out of them? Uh, you know, there's some guys that I hadn't I hadn't seen, you know, and, and in this age group that happens. Sometimes it's, it's unseen. Uh, the best recruits – no matter what team is the players. Right. So this player knows that player, this player knows that player. And you get to know him. a guy like Cameron Stokes. Um, yeah, he I've good. heard about him. I, I hadn't seen him. Uh, took a, maybe two games to get under, to get his feet underneath him, and then just pull ball. And he plays on a line with, so with Ray Robbins and Graham Brulot. And, and again, I'll put them up against any, any line in this league. And um, so he, surprised sure. Cause I hadn't really seen him play. He, sure. he was, he was fun to watch. Um, guys like Mitch Casey that I hadn't seen play a whole lot um, in the last couple of years, um, you know, Paul vaulted in the playoffs. There's yeah, there, there's, there was lots of cool, cool stories and, right. and, and, and seeing these players develop and, and seeing them as young men. Yeah. I, I couldn't agree more. It was really, really cool to watch everybody play last year for you guys and, and just be able to take in those games and watch such great talent. But let's talk a little bit about transition then from year one to year two. What can Irish fans expect in year two? Is there going to be a, a drop off? Is there non-returnees that you're going to have big shoes to fill? No, more more the opposite. You know, okay. We, we, uh, um, so top three on the list: get a goalie. Number two, get a goalie. Number three, <laughs> get a goalie. Um, it, it, you know, I think we went through five or six after Turkey, and right. uh, it was frustrating again. Um, so we, we've got two. You know, we, we, we brought in uh, Zach Weir, who's a former Stratford, uh, Culleton Stratford Warrior goalie, was an all-star junior B goalie. And we brought in hometown uh, Nathan Young, um, who grew up in the Stratford system, played for here in Perth Lakers and, and, and played junior B in Kamoka and, and St. Thomas. And so we're, we're real happy there. And again, as, as most people who run a hockey club, 
management will say you grow from the net out. So we're, we're happy with there. We, we brought in some, um, some other players, uh, uh, Riley Coombs who, who played with the London Knights a couple of years and, um, has some uh, experience in this caliber of hockey, uh, Dylan Buckholz, uh, you know, there's, there, there's a few other players that, that, that we brought in Graham blue lots back from Germany. So no, we're, we're very happy. Um, now we're, we're bare skeleton of a hockey club right at the moment as in 20 players. So we'll add same as other teams. We'll add as we go. I don't, I don't think we need to sign 26 guys right now, but no, I think the fans, uh, We'll, we'll be happy with, with our hockey club. Uh, we, we lost a couple, um, but uh, we'll speak more about the guys that are coming in. We're, we're real happy. Brock Tricolo, uh, Brandon Spezia, uh, Hunter, uh, sorry, <coughs> excuse me, Dylan Hunter. No, we're, we're happy with uh, where we're at right now and, you know, get that first exhibition game under our belt. We're missing a couple of players for that. Again, this age group, but no, ready to go. Uh, home opener against the Delhi Fames, October 8th. Let's go. Yeah, like you spoke a little bit about it, that big exhibition game this upcoming uh, Saturday at 4.30 at the William Wall Memorial Arena against the Alvinson Killer Bees. Um, a lot of people expect the Alvinson Killer Bees to be better this year. Do you echo that statement? Yep, yep, and I talked to you about that as, as, as yeah. where the different hat. Yeah, no, they'll be better uh, for sure. They did, a, they did a wonderful job, you know, and we played them a lot last year. We played them in exhibition. We played them in the season. You know, we'll play them a bunch of times this year. No, they did a – they did a good job, and I expect Saturday, even though it's exhibition, and who knows what the result will be. Sure. But uh, no, they'll be better. And 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 again, I can't say enough about uh, what they did in the off season. And 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 again, the proof will be in the pudding when when mm-hmm. when we hit the ice. But all all indications are they've uh, they picked up some good players, and and behind the scenes, they've they've stabilized their. Um, kind of like the management and, and, and so on and the, the other the other side of hockey. So. Sure, of course. Um, and, and again, the other part about it is a little bit of an advantage, if you will, about having that exhibition game. Speak to the volume of that, because I think an exhibition game is so crucial for a lot of guys to get the game flow under their under their feet and just kind of, you know, get used to that that flow again. Right. I think that's a huge advantage. Well, sure it is. And, you know, we've, we've been on the ice. I think we've practiced five or six times and various degrees of numbers at the, at the, uh, at practices. And we've had some good turnouts and then some were people, but yeah, you get sick of practice. Sure. Of course. They want to play. They want to play games. So we're and- excited to, uh, to have, uh, you know, to get into game action and they're probably sick of hearing me blow the whistle. So, um, we'll get some game action Saturday and then we have a baseball, uh, baseball game after uh with the players a little fun and try to kick off the year and yeah you also have another big event uh coming up as well do you want to talk about that a little bit yeah you know you know i've talked about that and i talked a little bit about that with the other hat that i wear with the league is but but stratford and i'll speak just solely for stratford right now we want to be more than a hockey club we want to be more than 60 minutes of hockey uh on saturdays at 4 30 right. so we uh we have a big uh, live music show coming up next uh next friday september 30th uh we have a local musician Jagger, who will who will open up for us and then we brought in the romeo sex fighter um band uh, i seen them play about uh about a month ago so they're the number one cover band in canada so they, wow. they they're everywhere from 80s to current bon jovi huey lewis tom petty uh, nice. the hip um so no we're excited we want to again be more than that hockey game is it cheap to run these hockey teams? No, it's not. We're, we're happy as our league that the budgets are down, but, but this is a way one people can get out, you know, the, the, uh, the last two years people have cooped up. So we want to entertain. Is it a fundraiser? 100%. But, but this is the first kind of kick in the can of the, uh, the fight in Irish uh, concert series, as we'll call it. So like we, it. we have some other stuff in, in the works. And, and again, we want to be on everybody's radar for 12 months a year not just for the hockey season. So yeah, right now we're over 450 tickets sold and um, Amazing. it's, it's been a, it's been an interesting uh, process. I am not a music guy and uh, this is my first kick the can, but we've had, uh, we've had really good support from, from someone that's heading this up for us. Uh, Ralph Spaltor from, from Kitchener, um, uh, a friend of mine, uh, we used to play, we used to play ball against each other. It's funny how, funny how it goes. You get to, uh, can't stand on a guy playing all the way up to, to now you're, you're working together. So pretty sure. cool. Yeah. It's a big, uh, it'll be a big night for us. It's kind of the kickoff to the year. 
we'll have our players there and and, and all our local uh, fans, and, and they'll be entertained with a great night of music. Absolutely. No, it's, it's going to be a great night, and uh, just wanted to make sure you touched on that a little bit. Um, one of my final questions for you, I guess, is uh, it, when it comes to year two from a Stratford fighting Irish perspective, how would you define a successful year two? Like, I mean, obviously growth is important. How would you like to see your club continue to grow and what do you need to do to accomplish that? Well, it would be, it'd be a few different areas. Um, one, take, take a longer run in the playoffs. Let's just get that out of the way. Let's take a longer run. But again, I, I touched on that earlier. It's not about the banner. Yes, we still want to win for sure. But it's do, do we get 100 more people uh, uh, butts in the seats? Um, do we have more uh, more local charities or groups coming to us asking for help? Um, uh, you know, because we, we we're very conscious of that and, and we want to keep rocking on that. Um, are we more entrenched in the community? Just just things like up in the ramp. And, and, and we and, and we're working on that. Uh, it, it, I would say if we could get to four or 500 people at our games average, that would be huge. It would be a huge growth. Awesome. But, but we're still, again, the, you know, we have, a, we have a great hockey club in Stratford with the Junior B Warriors, and they've been around for 30, 40 years. I don't know what it is, and it's, it's great entertainment on Friday nights. But, but we think we're great entertainment on Saturday. Uh, we think we're, we're great value. So we just want to be an extension of, uh, of the great hockey community in, in, in town and um, to me, 4.30s at, uh, at the Almond is uh, great entertainment. And like I said, the great value. And um, we just want to keep plucking our way up to the, to the entertainment category in this town. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And you guys are right there, I think, and on the cusp of something great. Uh, on, on any given night, any team can win. I think that's where you want to be in this league and as a team, uh, be competitive every single sure. And I'll, and I'll touch on that, that, that if we have everybody out, I believe, you know, I haven't seen the other four, the, the new teams, but as I touched on before, I think they'll be competitive. Mm -hmm. I believe with everybody out from the, the additions we had and, and the guys that are returning, um, we have a chance to win every game. What else can you ask for? You know, Absolutely. and then you let the players and uh, t take care of that on the ice. You know, and, we, and like I said, we'll, we'll add some players as we go, just like every other team will. But, but no, we're, we feel confident about our hockey club um, that we're, um, like I said, when, when the puck drops, we'll be we'll be competitive with any hockey club. Absolutely, no question about it. Uh, last question I have for you, Jamie, and I've been I asked everybody else this that I spoke to. Just I guess as a hockey guy, you've been around hockey for pretty much your entire life, I'd imagine. Um, what is it that keeps coming you back? Is there one thing about it that you just love the most? That just you know is the fuel that that adds you to your fire. Well, while you're asking the question, the first thing that came to my mind was relationships. <laughs> you know, we, we had a, we had a hockey office meeting last night and, and I've never professed to be Mike Bobcock or Scotty Bowman. And, you know, there's lots of people that are exes and O's genius, but if you don't have relationships, it doesn't matter how smart a hockey man you are. So to me, it would be relationships. Um, you know, and that's all aspects. That's our volunteers. The person who runs the gate, that runs the bar, our, our, our executive, the players, it, it would be relationships. Obviously I have, still the competitive juice for hockey. Um, I play Scrabble, with my freaking old man, and, and I want to play. So, so there's that, but, it, but I would say it's the relationship. This is my hobby, um, you know, to spend time with Jeff Morris, Dave Cassoni, Terry Casey, it goes on, Steve Vaders. It's, it, it's relationships, and that's, that's what it's about. Hockey is part of it, and, and, and I'm not trying to be hoaxy here, but while you're asking the question, first thing that popped in my mind, relationships. Um, it's, it's when it stops being fun to come to the rink or come to a meeting or, or go out and, and, and build relationships with, um, partners and business, then I'll, then I'll pass the baton. Um, so that the relationships. I like that answer, Jamie. I like that a lot. And, uh, the one thing that I love about this league is the, the people that are involved. It's uh, good people and good product on the ice. So, uh, I appreciate that. Uh, we've been talking with Jamie Petrie, pre uh, president, uh, of well, more or less, man of all hats uh, for the uh, he's been talking about the Stratford Fighting Irish. They play the Alvin St. Killer Bees in the exhibition play this upcoming Saturday at four thirty, William Alvin Memorial Arena. Thanks, Jamie, for uh, speaking with us on behalf of the Irish, and uh, we'll catch up with you throughout the season. I know we will. So thank you very well, much. Thank you, and, I'll, and I will add this too. Uh, as far as the Irish, we want to welcome you back. Um, I know you're a busy man, but you're still going to be behind the mic as much as you can with Brian Hawley. Uh, the feedback that we got 
um, was outstanding. And I mean that um, with you and him, you formed a, a good chemistry. You're both uh, passionate sport guys, but hockey. So our, uh, our um, great listeners, uh, our followers are going to get to see you guys back at the helm and, and we're looking forward to it. So welcome back, my friend. Thank you very much. I appreciate the kind words and we'll talk to you soon. Okay, buddy. Uh, so we're back here on the Western Ontario Super Hockey League podcast season preview show. Uh, very pleased to be joined at this time by the general manager of the Alvin's the Killer Bees, Brett Case. Brett, uh, great to have you on here, pal. Uh, welcome to the uh, podcast and uh, welcome to the season preview show. Great to have you on here, pal. And uh, I'd like to say general welcome, man. Yeah, thank you. It's uh, great to be here. and It's great to get another season of hockey going. Absolutely. This is the time of the season, right? I mean, it, it just, it feels like, we're getting there. It's colder in the evenings now, and uh, you just sense that hockey's on the horizon. Uh, first of all, how are you doing on a, on a personal note? Uh, how was the off season, and uh, how excited are you to get going here again? Uh, good. It's been a good break from the rink, but it's nice to get back with the guys and uh, build this team and get the uh, buzz going in Elvinson. Hey, hey, I, I see that B references. We're going to have a lot of those, I feel. All right, well, well done. Well done, Brett. Uh, okay, so yeah, Alvinston's season last year, uh, I think we can we could call it a wash at this point. I mean, you know, it's just like it, it didn't go you guys' way, um, you know, for various reasons, none of which maybe some we can get into. But I think at the end of the day, it's a learning experience. You got to take it and go. Um, do you want to just sum up the year for us? Like, uh, I guess, where did it – where could you guys improve? Uh, maybe, maybe more or less is the question. Yeah, you know, uh, it was a tough season. Um, I like to think that the halfway point there was a big turnaround, though. I think we developed. We got a, got a strong group of core players there. Um, we moved into the playoffs, and I think we competed with Stratford um, in the, those two playoff games there. Unfortunately, we came out of the losing end, but uh, I, I think this year is a different story. We were going to put that year behind us, and – we're going to build on it. We've got a good core of guys here and we're going to build, build around them. And uh, I think recruitment's going great and I, I'm excited for this year. Really am. So, yeah, I guess uh, take, take me through a little bit of the behind the scenes process, obviously from transition from year one to year two. I mean, that can have its own challenges, uh, you know, in general. Um, there's a lot of good talent, like you said, from last year. Like what, what is, uh, I guess, the return rate been like so far? Uh, yeah, it's, it's been, it's been good this year. Uh, I think we have about, I, I want to say about 16, 17 returnees for sure. Oh, perfect. Um, okay. that, that will be back in the lineup uh, this year. Um, but also we're building on it. We're getting some young talent um, as a little town in Elvinson between Tilbury and Strathroy recruiting is a little bit difficult. So we got to really depend Nowadays, on, yeah. depend on a lot of work. We got to get our boots to the ground and we've uh, I think we've really shown that, um, I, I think with our recent signings and announcements, um, I think it's going to be a good year. I'm excited. Well, that's great. And obviously, yeah, uh, like, uh, you know, time is now for that uh, to get the, get things going and, and get and dust off the rust, if you will. Um, you know, and, and, and so, yeah, with, with your team, like uh, one, two big things from last year, one of the biggest ones I want to talk about first is, uh, was the emergence of Grant Spence. He is so unbelievable in terms of being a, a prolific player in this league how impressed were you with his uh, first year in the Washoe league oh grant he's an incredible hockey player unfortunately uh he had to make the step on making going on to a bigger better hockey um which congratulations to him going to windsor university okay. uh huge step for him uh but that, the guy he's just um one of the best hockey players i've, I've seen in a long time um plays a 200 foot game uh, puts the puck in the net, can fly, has good hands, and he really took a leadership role. Unfortunately, we were just given an assistant captain uh, before he left to Windsor. Um, but, but yeah, congratulations to him. I hope all the best. Uh, he's okay. playing for Windsor this year, but it, it will be great. That's it. Yeah, a tough void. Obviously, a tough, a big shoes to fill, no question. Um, another player I was really impressed with last year was Sebastian Nagara. Uh, you know, a, a, a good uh, point production guy. Um, what's his status, I guess, coming in this year? Yes. Yeah, so, Sebastian, we're hoping to get him back in the lineup. He's a little banged up right now, um, off season, obviously, but in a couple of weeks, we're hoping to get him in the lineup. Um, he's been out skating with us, but he's still recovering from some injuries, but, uh, okay. we're, we're happy to, uh, to have him back in the lineup and, uh, and keep going, uh, with the, 
movement with him. Uh, he's he he was effective last year. He plays again. He played both ends, and he kind of gets in your face. He's a small guy, but he's a great hockey player. He uh, he really uh, kind of turns the game around. He can he can either you know throw a hit and kind of laugh at the guy, or he can score a few goals for us, which is good. Yeah, I know, and I guess he kind of every team needs a, a couple players like that. Um, when it comes to a team's success, obviously there's any given reason as to a, a team being successful, whether it be buying into the program, whether it be commitment. Um, well, I guess for you, what is what is the most important thing that you want to drive home to your players to have them bring to the rink every single night? Yeah, you know, I think it's really commitment. I look at last year's room. Um, we had we, every player there was committed to playing for us. We had one win. It's tough to be commitment coming to the rink every day. But it was a fun group of guys, and and it's uh, it's something to build on. And of course, with our leadership group, um, they're, they're very key with that one win season to keep the guys motivated, keep them coming to the rink, uh, keep everybody happy. You know, after every game, I think I think you know it, it, we might have lost, but I think after the game, the guys really enjoyed their time, and you know, you'd always stick t- together, uh, go out to Armour's Ale House after, maybe do some karaoke, and uh, <laughs> it, was, it was always it was it was never. It's tough to swallow a loss, but when you're with a great, great group of guys like we are, uh, it's a little bit easier. But this year is going to be a different story. I'm telling you that. Well, hey, and, and I'm hopeful for that as well, uh, Brett. No question about it. I I really did think that you guys were a much better team than a one eighteen and one record. I'll be honest. Having watched you guys play a number of times, like you could see the product on the ice was there. A couple bad breaks, and next thing you know, it's the the score is bloated. Um, I, I, in terms of like, what do you, what do you want to see from your crease play this year? I, I know that you can't blame everything on the goalies, but they get a lot of the brunt uh, for, for big losses. Uh, what's your hope in the crease this year? You know what? Um, I think with our goaltending, uh, we got, we had trio of goalies here that I think really it could be one, two, three in the league. Um, okay. We have Dane Doubles, uh, Nolan DeComing, and we have a few other guys too that we're working on. Um, Spencer Robertson's going to return as well. It's uh, it's exciting, exciting times. I honestly think we could have the one, two, three duo um, or trio, I guess I should say. Um, I, I think Nolan DeConing, we just picked him up a few weeks ago. Uh, big time goalie out of Junior B, just won uh, with Chatham Maroons. Uh, Dane Goebbels is going to return. Um, it's exciting times for that. Uh, he stole us some games. And obviously you got Spencer Robertson. You got a few other guys we're getting looks at too. Yeah, no, I, and I and I honestly like that's the thing. I know it's all not all on the goaltending, like I said, but I I really do hope that um, you know things could come together for you guys because, like I said, I thought you were much better than the one eighteen one record uh, from last season. And now, uh, talk to me a little bit about these expansion teams because obviously that throws a big wrinkle into it, and it really expands the competition because now you got four more teams: Delhi, Aaron, uh, Tilbury, and Plattsville. Um, you know, speak a little bit about that, what that expanded competition is going to be like, and how do you think you guys are going to measure up? You know what? It's awesome for the league. Um, it's great to see that the league's expanding. Um, and it's nice to see that uh, it's kind of spread out through through the province as well. Like this is Southern Ontario still, but, you know, you're going down to Tilbury up to Aaron. Um, and this league, obviously, it's it's growing faster and it's it's still solid hockey. Um, for us, I think it's going to be – it's great. Um we're going to play Tilbury six times this year and I'm excited. Um, I, I think four of the six games are within six weeks too. So okay. you might build a, we might build a little rival there. Um, and, and it, it's, again, it's always good for hockey to get more teams, uh, you know, play, playing five teams last year. It was fine, but uh, it, it's going to be great playing the, the additional four teams and, and spreading out the season um, and, and maybe building that rival with Tilbury. Right. No, absolutely. That would be obviously great. You know, between the two of us, I think they got one of the best logos in the league. I, it's a, it's a pretty, pretty sharp there with the Bluebirds. Um, so yeah, with you guys, you guys open up the season. You guys got a couple of exhibition games. Uh, one against the Strapper Fighting Irish this upcoming Saturday, and then again on Saturday, October the first, you go to Strathroy to play the Jets. Um, in these two exhibition games, I mean, obviously, maybe you have a leg up on the competition, given the fact that you play two. Uh, but what are you hoping to see out of these exhibition contests? Uh, I'm really excited to see what, what uh, our young guys, new new recruits can do um, on, you know, like you said, we have two exhibition games. So I think uh, 
the first one, we're going to have a battle for the last spots. Uh, it's great to be able to have those two games to really have a battle, a true battle. Um, when, when you only have one exhibition game, it's tough to see some guys battle for that spot. So I'm excited this coming Saturday when we play Stratford to see these, these guys battle and earn that spot with the team. Uh, and then obviously the, the game against Strathroy, it's, it's so key for us because uh, we, again, we have a week, uh, week later start, so we don't start till October 7th, but um, it's great to get a game in with the whole lineup and get everybody uh, battling for that spot and kind of getting that um, the, the line combinations going right. Uh, last yeah. year, I find, I, I found that uh, with, with the, I guess the change of lines every game, it was tough for everybody to kind of get the mojo together. Um, so hopefully this year we can keep everything together and we can get that commitment and keep rolling like, like we can. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously, you know, another tough contest to start the season, getting the defending champs uh, October the 7th in Alora. Uh, tough building to play in if you've ever been there. Uh, speak a bit about buildings and, and playing in, in front of the home crowd in, in Alvinston. It's quite an arena there. You guys have, seem to have a great attendance in terms of, uh, you know, the people, the locals buying in. How impressed were you with their attendance last year? And are like how optimistic, I guess, that it will carry over to year two? Oh, El Elvinston, it's, it's a small but mighty town. Um, the, the, you know, it's a, they always like to say it's a sweet place to be. Um, and now we're, now we're going to throw in the killer bees there. Um, there was a void and the town of Elvinston kind of had a missing spot. Uh, and I feel like the killer bees have found that home and kind of filled that void. Um, we were getting about 300 people out to a game. We think this year with, with everything we're doing in game experience and having a team on the ice, we think this year we're going to get three to 500 people a game. Um, we, we really think this town, they're really behind us. The support is crazy. Um, the goal, the goal from day one was to bring that void to, or fill that void from Elvinson. Mm -hmm. And I think we have done that. And now it's our job as the killer bees to return the favor to Elvinson and bring it, bring a Sleeman's cup home. Hey, that's well said, uh, Brett. I, I love that. Uh, in, in terms of this game, I mean, anyone, anyone who's ever like who is a hockey person will tell you different things as to why they love the game. Um, what is it that keeps come bringing you back? Like, what is it about this game that you love the most that you are hoping to, I guess, uh, put onto the players and and hope that they can feel that way as well? You know what? I think I think it's the community. Um, I, I grew up in Watford, but uh, mm -hmm. Watford Elvinson, it's about 10, 15 minutes away. Uh, minor hockey and every it's almost one big community now your fairs shared uh, your minor hockey systems I think it's just bringing um, they had the loss of the Elvinson Flyers a few years back where they moved to Petroleum and I think there there was a lot of key community members there that were really missing that 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 piece and mm -hmm. hockey is that community and and I was part of it and I thought you know what I think El the senior loop would be perfect for Elvinson you know uh, we got the bar on the ice level we got the bar um, we got our own beer coming this year it's, it's huge community and the, and it just, you know, trying to win, win players over to from Strathroy or Tilbury even. Um, and then obviously there's Petrolia down the road in the other loop. Uh, so our recruitment's really been about community and saying, Hey, look guys, this town, if, if you play for the Ellen Secular Bees, you're part of the community, no matter where you're from. Last year, we had a guy from Bowmanville, um, a few hours drive to Elvinson, but it's like, he was, he was a, born and raised in Elvinson. It's crazy how this community supports us. And like I said, it's, it's time for us to return that favor and it's time for us to uh, really show Elvinson what we actually have, have to bring to them. Absolutely. That's well said, Brett. Uh, and obviously I'm optimistic for you guys as well, that you guys can put a good product on the ice and you can be successful. Uh, that's my last question to you. What would define a successful season in year two for the killer bees out of the nine teams that we're now in this league? What would define a successful season? Well, you know what? Um, I, I know last year we're coming off a one-win team, one-win uh, year, and a lot of, you know, it, it kind of put a little fire under, under our butts here in, in Elvinson. Um, we really, we've really uh, geared up. We've really uh, built a roster that we feel that we could compete. We can compete every night. And honestly, I think our goal right now is bringing that Sleemans home and, uh, and really establishing Elvinson as a hockey community and putting it right back on the map where it belongs. Hey, uh, Brett, it's happened before in other sports where you go last to first, buddy. So you never that's really right. know. And uh, yeah. That's right. We've uh, really, we've really uh, captured the whole LV versus everybody. And we feel like, like uh, it's time It's time for Elvinson to kind of 
show what we got. And, and like I said, it's all about community and bringing that, bringing that trophy home. Uh, that's awesome, man. Uh, we've been speaking with uh, Alvin Zakilabee's general manager, Brett Case. Brett, it's been a pleasure. We'll uh, catch up with you throughout the season. Uh, you guys uh, open exhibition this Saturday against the Strapper Fighting Irish. William Allman Memorial Arena, 430. Good luck in that one, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks a lot. Perfect. Thanks. Thanks, Andrew. Have a great day. All right, folks, uh, we're back here on the uh, Western Ontario Super Hockey League uh, podcast uh, season preview show. At uh, this point in time, I shall say uh, hello out there. We're on the air. It's hockey night in Aaron tonight. Yeah, that's just a little yeah. uh, homage to uh, Aaron's own, uh, the late musician, Tom Connors. Of course, I couldn't use the actual song because then YouTube would flag me for copyright. But now it's also home, Aaron to the Aaron Blitz of the Western Ontario Super Hockey League. And uh, we're pleased to be joined by the general manager, Jeff Richards. Jeff, great to have you on. Welcome to the uh, WOSHL. Well, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Hey, uh, so yeah, obviously it's a big deal. You guys coming in, one of the four expansion teams this year, going from five now to nine. Uh, that's a big deal. Uh, first of all, like I say, welcome. That's a big deal. And uh, how excited are you uh, coming over to the uh, Western Ontario Super Hockey League? Oh, very excited. Uh, it's, we're, we're gearing up here. We're, we're, we're going uh, pretty strong and the town, the town's really excited for it and looking forward to for the next well, couple of weeks. Now we start uh, start the season. Um, take me a little bit behind the scenes as to how this process came about, because that's always, that always really interests me in terms of an expansion team coming into a new league. I guess, when did it start and, and when did it really become like a distinct possibility? Uh, well, I actually saw some signs around town. Um, I wasn't a part, uh, Tim, Tim Wilson, our, our, our owner and the president of the team, he actually, uh, he's the one who got it all started. Um, and we, we basically found each other and we started talking about it and I was really excited about it. Um, and I know the town's really excited about having a, a, a competitive team. So, yeah, I, we had a talk and we headed off right from from day one. And, you know, we're both excited about uh, about bringing a good a good uh, good team uh, to the town of Aaron. So which is great. And obviously we're we're pumped to have you here in the, the, the Washoe League. Um, you know, you and four and the three other teams that are joining you in this team in this uh, league of nine now. Um, what excites you the most about the, the prospects of this upcoming season there, uh, Jeff? Well, <laughs> I guess what excites me is 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 building uh, building a competitive team uh, to put on the ice for the town of Aaron. Um, I know myself, the whole management staff, uh, coaching staff. We're all competitors. We all love the game. Um, and watching some of the games from last year in the finals on uh, Five One Nine Sports, um, I'm excited to see what kind of product we can to be competitive and you know coming here as a first year team and and hopefully do really, really well. So take, take me through a little bit about the recruitment process. Um, like how, how has that come together? Have you noticed a, uh, I guess, a desire for players? Like, is there, a, 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 I guess, a motivation for them to want to come and play uh, for the Blitz this upcoming season? What, what have you noticed? Well, between myself, uh, the head coach, um, Mike Manuel, and assistant coach, Derek Robson, um, we've all been involved in the game. I, I still scout for the Erie Otters. Um, Mike, Mike is uh, coached in, in tier two. Um, Derek has played in the, in the senior league. So between the three of us and people just being excited and, and requesting to come out for a skate through our website, um, a lot of local talent that have played tier two, um, some NCAA, some, some uh, Canadian University hockey, uh, so yeah, they're all excited and, and uh, ready to go. Uh, and uh, I mean, maybe this is a far-fetched question, but uh, if if you had to if you had to say, maybe play a little predictor, like what is your expectation for the season for the Aaron Blitz? Oh, I, I for our first year, I I, don't, I will definitely want to be in the, in the top top four, top three or four. I think we got to, I think we're putting together a really good squad. Uh, I think, uh, you know, some of the other teams will be impressed on the, on the talent that we have, not from our, from our local skill, our local talent, 
from and as well as from guys from outside of town. And um, in terms of like what makes a team successful, I mean, that's a that's a great goal to have in mind is finishing kind of mid tier to top tier uh, in your first year. I mean, that sends a definite statement that you're not a team to be messed with um, w- when it comes to a team success. Obviously, anyone will tell you maybe commitment, uh, just overall general morale, maybe. What is your definition of a team success and, and what would be the recipe, the top recipe there? Well, I, I, you know, uh, attitude reflects leadership. So it's going to come from the top, from our, from our ownership. Um, and yeah, you definitely have to have a good group of guys to get, get along really well, want to play for each other, want to stick up for one another. Um, from the coaching staff, um, you know, their ability to, to coach and develop the guys, whether, you know, in a system to compete. Um, you know, and I think I think we've got that right from the top um, all the way down to, you know, the guys that we have so far that we're bringing in to form the group. No, I, I that's that's great to hear. And um, like I say, I, I just it, it's so funny when it comes to this whole idea of expansion teams coming in. You obviously yeah. want to see them do well for the long term success, not just for the year one, but for two, three and four and five to really build a winning yeah. culture and to build a, a solid program. Am I right? Yeah, the hundred percent. And, you know, there's still a lot of people that within, I don't know, say a 20 mile radius of where we are, 30 mile radius that um, are still, you know, getting in touch with us that are interested to come up for escape. But at some point we have to sort of break it off so we can start working, working as a team because on the 30th, we play Alora. So, right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. So we need to get going on that with the, with the team aspect, but I think um, as the season progresses, def- we're definitely, I feel that we're definitely going to have a lot, lot of interest in the team, um, whether it's bringing players in or, you know, for next year. Absolutely. I think yeah. Lot, yeah. Yeah, no, I, and I'd like to say I'm definitely excited for you guys to see what you got. I love the Aaron Blitz logo. I don't care who what anyone else says, but I, I'm a big yeah. fan of it. It looks really sharp. Uh, I'm a big fan. Um, so, yeah, let's like talk. uniforms as well. Yeah, no doubt uh, the color scheme uh, is outstanding. Um, yeah. Let's talk about that first game because it's a tough draw uh, anytime yep. you have to play defending champs in their in their own barn in the uh, yep. for the opening game. Um, you know, does that – like how much of a challenge uh, does that present do you think and how do you hope your team will respond to that challenge well again we're all competitors we all want to win um i know a lot of guys you know just speaking with with the guys uh you know in the dress room that you know we are we are playing defending champs our first game so i think it's a good thing where we can make a statement you know whether we're if we're going to be competitive or not in the league I mean, right. there's, so no I bigger, there's, there's no bigger, there's no bigger measuring stick than that. Am I right? I mean, yeah, hundred percent. And you know, they're all looking forward to that as well, right? So it's it's the best time to to, you know, if we're if we're ready as a team by then, which I hope we are, that's there's no better time than to play the best in the league and you know and, and make a statement whether whether we win or lose. Oh, I, I couldn't have said it better myself there. Um, yeah. When it when it comes to this league, like how familiar how familiar are you with uh, the the first year of its inaugural season? Like I know you said you watched a little. What impressed you? Yeah. Um. Again, it, it looked it looked it looked competitive. It looked skilled. You know, a mixture of of you know different levels. Um. And yeah, and it was just something I wanted to be a part of, help grow uh, within the within the Aaron community. Um. You know, and and hopefully, you know, that I were able to put. Uh, to put a really good competitive team together to compete, compete in the league. And um, yeah, you guys will be playing all your home games at uh, center 2000 um, at 14 bowl and yeah. five. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. That's and, correct. and uh, I'm, I'm not personally familiar with this arena, I, but uh, do you, are you guys optimistic that uh, you're going to get a, a good attendance on a nightly basis? I, I think, we're, I think we're going to pack the barn personally. Okay. Um, Years ago, when I was when I was coaching in Tier Two, I would come up the odd time uh, with our general manager, and we would scout some players. And the Junior C team, when there was the Shamrocks, okay. the place was packed. Right. And then they left. And then in 2017, I went in to watch um, uh, Midget BB OMHA finals. Okay. And the barn was packed for for a BB Midget BB 
um, the, the stands were packed and there were three to four deep along the wall. Oh, wow. So, you know, they're, they're desperate for some really good competitive hockey. And I think we're, uh, I think we'll bring that to, to the town of Aaron for sure. And I'm excited right. for that. Hey, I, I share your excitement, Jeff. I really do. And, I, and I'm hopeful for you guys. No question. Uh, last question to you is this, um, you know, being a hockey guy, you sound like a hockey guy. You sound like you're passionate and, and motivated and that, and that sort of thing. What is it about this game that you love the most? And what is it that you're hoping to uh, uh, put on to the players and that will reflect in their play? Well, obviously every, everybody that we're, that we're bringing in is a, they played at a high level. Um, I, I love the camaraderie of the game, the speed, the skill, um, the competition, um, you know, and, you know, just being at a, being at a, continuing at a, in the high level. Um, I think, uh, you know, I'm looking to, you know, be a part, uh, be a part of the of, of the new team that's coming in and and bringing players in that want to compete and want to win, obviously, um, and you know just build something strong for for now and for the future. Uh, hey, that's well said, uh, Jeff. Uh, we've been speaking with Jeff Richards, uh, general manager of the Aaron Blitz, uh, the uh, one of the new expansion teams of the Western Ontario Super Hockey League, right here on the season preview show. Uh, Jeff, it's been a pleasure. Uh, we appreciate you coming on, and uh, best of luck in your season opening game Friday, uh, September thirtieth, in Alora against the Alora Rocks. Uh, thanks a lot for doing this. We'll catch up throughout the season. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, and look forward to doing it again soon. Okay, uh, at this time, we are uh, very, very pleased to officially welcome to the uh, Western Ontario Super Hockey League and uh, great to welcome in my guest at this time from the Plattsville Lakers, Jeff Zier. Uh, Jeff, it's uh, great to have you on here, pal. Thank you very much for doing this. And uh, like I said, welcome to Washington, pal. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, myself and our, our squad are obviously excited and looking forward to uh, uh, exciting and eventful year it's uh yeah it's definitely um th this time of year is my favorite Jeff I don't know about you but you know hockey's on the horizon um you know things are happening things are coming up and uh we're getting very very close obviously this upcoming weekend is our first round of exhibition games very exciting stuff there um so you guys are coming in you're a fresh expansion team one of four um, what has the process been like to this point? Um, and, and kind of take us through maybe a little bit of a behind the scenes, I guess, for you as to how that process has been so far. Sure. Um, well, our Plattsville Lakers uh, franchise, um, we've had a team for nine years now, uh, eight of them being in uh, Tier 2 Junior A in the GMHL, um, which we left this uh, spring joined the Washall and uh, it's been nothing but um, from organization from top to newbies um, it's been superb uh, the league has tremendous support with one another and um, the transition's been really easy um, as far as uh, you know game plan and working and trying to get her going it's a lot different because it is a 24 game schedule. So 12 home, 12 away. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically with your 20 year, 20 year old year to however old, mm -hmm. um, you know, we've, we've gone into this our first year with um, not really reaching out to too many kids. Like we would have been in towards the junior uh, side of it, we've kind of just put out uh, announcements and flyers um, since we joined back in the spring and uh, the reach out or the outcry uh, for some players in our area and surrounding to come join our team uh, has been superb to date. Well, that's that's great. I mean, uh, that like how rewarding does that have to be when when you know you're putting feelers out there and guys are obviously pumped about the idea and prospect of playing for the Lakers in this new, in this new Washington league that's entering into year two. Yeah, it's, uh, to be honest, I, I, I would hope, and I think that it'll catch on a little bit more locally. 
Um, with that, I mean like the KW area um, because Plattsville, we're like 15 minutes outside of Kitchener. Right. Um, so Kitchener, Waterloo, Cambridge, uh, Caledonia, um, you know, Hamilton Way, uh, all within, you know, 15 minutes to 45 minutes. There's a lot of junior B and C teams in those areas. Sure. <clears throat> um, former players, local junior guys in that area. Um, it'd be like, it'd be nice to have a little bit more draw from them. Mm -hmm. Um, with that being said, the same as like ex pro or school guys, um, you know, being so close to the 401 and Kitchener Waterloo area, it'd be nice to maybe get a, a few more guys, but, um, you know, now we're talking a lot of our guys are GTA and Niagara way. So, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, instead of coming 15 minutes to 45, like I said, they're more, more or less been like an hour, hour and a half, but, uh, right. our practices have been upbeat so far and, uh, okay. we're both three weeks away from, from go time and we'll be ready. Right on. That's, uh, that's great to hear. Obviously. Yeah. You guys don't open the season until, uh, Friday, October the 14th, the weekend of the 14th, you're on the road against the Strathroy Jets finished number two in the league last year. And then, uh, yeah, you open up at home, uh, against the Tilbury Bluebirds on Sunday, the 16th. Um, how exciting is it when you look ahead to that opening weekend for you guys? I mean, obviously it'll put this whole process, um, you know, to, to the head, uh, but, uh, I guess like, like, what is, I, or do you have any expectations on the season or are you just going in this with your head held high and saying what happens happens? Uh, well, we'd like to come in and make some noise, sure. uh, our first year. Um, I mean, everybody likes to win. Um, I'm hoping that we can win a, a few games, if not a lot. Um, I'd be lying if, if I, if I said, uh, you know, we wouldn't like to win it, but we know, uh, having our first year, it's going to be a tough sled. Um, but we've been in hockey for our whole life. We know right. that uh, every time you get an opportunity to get on the ice, practice or game, it's an opportunity to play better. Yeah. Um, I always played the game uh, when I played. I, the only options were a good game or a great game. Right. Um, and that's the mentality we're going to take into our season there's going to be no bad days it's going to be a learning day every game and uh uh you know we want to come in here with our uh <clears throat> guns a blazing as right. i guess what they say yeah no I, I like that uh hey that's a that's a great motto absolutely um so you guys will be playing your games out of the plattsville arena right which is located at uh, 68 mill street is that correct <coughs> correct okay perfect and um like I guess for the for the for the town of Plattsville and, and to have this team and to to be able to run into this new league, like I guess what is the community um, I guess uh, reaction to this news? Um, has it been positive? Uh, well, the last two years we've had a junior team there, mm -hmm. um, but we had all this COVID crap. Sure, of course. <clears throat> so. Um, I, to be honest, I'd like to see more community support. Um, we've reached out, we've done a lot of, uh, community work, um, service, um, you know, been as visible as possible over the last two, three years. Good. Um, our, our support at games is, uh, very well the last couple of years in the South division in the league that we left, we had uh, one of the top attendants. Um, but I still think um, over this last year or so, like we still have been hearing a lot about COVID <clears throat> all because of COVID and restrictions yeah. and blah, blah, blah. Um, but I think that now that we're, uh, we've gone from boys to men, uh, it's more of a, a more exciting more entertainment for sure yeah and um it's gonna give um the community more to <clears throat> cheer for and to come out it's only 12 games um mm -hmm. so it gives everybody an opportunity to get to know the men right. that are going to go out there and battle and want to bring uh you know exciting playoff hockey i know that their men's league um that's been around for a while in Plattsville used to sell out um, right? over the course of the weekend just to watch men's league there. So wow. 
I'm hoping with us bringing some ex junior and ex pro guys in, um, obviously the hockey will be better than local men's league. Um, mm -hmm. We do have some locals as well, but um, it'd really be nice to see a packed barn in there because it is uh, it does get quite loud, Fair and enough. it gives the kids and students an opportunity in the town uh, to get together and uh, you know have some fun for a couple hours. <laughs> Absolutely, no, I, I agree with you completely, and uh, yeah, some of the crowds we got in Washa last year were outstanding, and uh, I can only expect more to follow this uh, sophomore year, if you will. Um, Jeff, uh, as a former player, you were mentioning, like, what what is your recipe for victory and success? Like, what what would you say at the end of the day you want to preach and you want to have the players grasp onto more than anything? I think it's just, it's more so you, you got to play with purpose and passion. And, uh, you know, if you're playing just for the sake of playing, it's a waste of time. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't matter where you've come from or where you want to go, but every time you lace the boots up, you got to play with purpose and passion. Right. Yeah, um, you know, we're going to have some guys that are waiting for passports to go to Europe to play pro. Um, wow. You know, some guys that are younger guys that, you know, want to give it a shot and maybe see what's out there um, as far as semi pro. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully get a few opportunities or whatnot. And then you're going to have some older guys that, you know, just want to keep playing because they want to chase a cup. Right. And the Sleeman cup is something that, you know, if we're going to play, that's something that our goal is going to be to strive to play towards. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, it's, you know, we're going to bring a little bit of everything. We got a lot of size, uh, speed, skill, we're going to be tough to play against and uh, you know, we're going to take advantage of our smaller barn and, and really uh, wear down teams. Well, Hey, I mean, you got to have that home ice. I mean, it's got to be loud. It's got to be electric. It's got to work in your favor. No question about that. Um, one thing that I've noticed in, in any, any league doesn't matter what tier junior senior, whichever um, commitment is a huge thing. I've noticed, um, you know, teams, live or die on number of bodies they get at any given night. I mean, you, you got to understand that as a, as a former player. And obviously you've seen it all that commitment is everything, right, Jeff? Oh, commitment's huge. Um, that's for sure. We've as a uh, owner and GM coach of teams, um, especially junior, I've, we've been through it all where we've had great commitment and we've had terrible, mm -hmm. um, we're on paper, we look great. And then come games, half our team shows up. Right. <clears throat> um, so you, you almost got to wean out uh, uh, that side of it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it, this is a sport and a game and a 24 game commitment that, you know, we're hoping that we get guys that are going to buy into the team and really going to, they're going to show up for each other. And I know with us, I don't want to have guys that are uh, home games only or road games only or right. whatever, um, because that's not, you know, that's not what it's about. You're not helping out the guy beside you um, or yourself um, being a part time guy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'd rather take 20, 25 guys that are going to be committed and, and show up to games and practices and roll it out there and see what we got. No, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. I just love, I just love the fact that yeah, commitment plays such a big uh, role in a team's success. No question. Um, Jeff, uh, when it comes to this league in general, obviously coming in fresh first year as an expansion group out of one of four, um, how, what is your knowledge on the Washa League from its first year and its inaugural year? Did you did you catch much? Did you take away much? Like what what what, what were your thoughts? Um, I was really intrigued and, uh, and attracted to <clears throat> the fact that it's really honing in on um, you know ex junior players mm -hmm. that are kind of caught in between. What do we do now when we're done junior? Um, I still have, you know, some gas in the tank. Um, maybe I slipped through a few opportunities. Let's see what's out there for the next couple of years. 
Um, same with guys coming out of school. Um, they finish up their programs. They don't know what they want to do. Um, you know, it beats, I mean, a lot of guys, if commitment's an issue, you know, your beer league or men's league where nobody really cares if you miss, come or go kind mm -hmm. of thing is more suited to them. But this is more or less, um, you know, we run it as professionally as what we can, um, you know, with what, a practice a week, 24 game schedule, it's all in place. Um, you know, live stream games, you know, the excitement, the entertainment, it's, it, it still gives guys that want to get sweaty a couple times a week, the chance to go out there, battle and get sweaty. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. I love the way you word that. That's funny. Um, Jeff, uh, you know, you're a hockey guy through and through. It just seems like that just, I just get that vibe. Um, what is it about this game? that keeps you coming back for more? Like, what is it that attracts you and what, what brings you in? And I guess, what is that? Uh, how is that? So, you know, how are you hoping that that transpires onto your team? Uh, I just, I have hockey in my veins and blood. Um, you know, I was, God gave me a gift and that was uh, hockey. And not only to be able to play, um, play the game that I love and, and be skilled and pretty good at it and play in every single pro league and, right. and, you know, got to play in the NHL, et cetera, but right. also the opportunity to, you know, kind of be there for some of these guys that haven't been there would have liked to have been there, but want to get the most out of the game is what they can. Um, it's not always about, you know, just the hockey and, and what can I get out of hockey, but it's also the connections and what could hockey maybe give me towards my career um, off ice. And that's the, that's what's intriguing about this league too, is you get a lot of guys that are on the fence about going to semi-pro in the States or whatever, but they're wanting to buy a house and start their future. Uh, maybe planning or starting a family or a new right. career and this this league gives an opportunity for those to be able to live at home work and still play some meaningful hockey yeah absolutely oh, i i couldn't agree with you more there uh that's absolutely factual um when it when it comes to this league i guess do you have any sort of familiarity with any of maybe say gms coaches uh you know personnel if you will like do you think there'll be rivalries that you'll have where maybe you'll have a little extra motivation when it comes to certain games? I, yeah, no, I think, you know, any team can be, any team in the league has, well, every team in the league has an opportunity to be stellar, to Absolutely. be, uh, you know, um, put a good product on the ice. Um, every team's going to have, you know, unfortunate circumstances where they're going to struggle a little bit or sure. go into a funk. Um, the thing that's exciting is that <clears throat> um, once or twice a week, we're going to have an opportunity to play a couple hours of puck. Right. Um, you know, I hope that, you know, we have friendly banter um, within the league. I think it's healthy. Um you know, we chirp each other on the ice. So why don't we chirp each other a little bit in social media and whatnot? Sure. Um, it doesn't mean I don't, I don't have ill will towards any team or player or anything mm -hmm. in the league. Um, but I think that it's, you know, we got to have some fun with this as well mm -hmm. and, you know, get the fans excited, um, jumping in on the banter and, and the chirping. And that's what brings, you know, some excitement for, for these guys and for us to, you know, go out there and put 60 minutes of product and entertainment on the ice. Absolutely. Uh, no, I couldn't agree with more. That's very well said, Jeff. Uh, we've been uh, speaking with Jeff's here, the uh, man of many hats for the Plattsville Lakers. They open their season Friday, October 14th on the road at the Gemini Sportsplex against the Strathroy Jets. Uh, Jeff, this has been an absolute pleasure, pal. Uh, we look forward to catching up with you uh, throughout the course of the season. Thank you very much for coming on for the season preview show. We appreciate it. Paul. Cheers. Thank you.
Okay, welcome back, everybody. Uh, Western Ontario Super Hockey League podcast. This is our season preview show. We're getting teed up for this upcoming uh, season number two in the Washable history. Uh, we welcome in four new teams, and we're pleased to be joined by the general manager of one of those four expansion teams, the Tilbury Bluebirds. Uh, this is Joe Byrne. Uh, Joe, it's uh, great to have you on with us. Uh, thank you very much for hopping on, and uh, welcome to Washable, buddy. Thank you very much. Uh, it's nice to be here today. Uh, it, like I said, this is a great uh, time, obviously, in, in Washell's, uh, you know, brief history, having a, a very successful year one. And now we've introduced four teams uh, with Tilbury being one of them. Uh, Joe, kind of take me a little bit behind the scenes of, as to how this process all kind of came together and what your role was in that. Well, I, I mean, I had heard about the league uh, starting a couple of years ago, uh, uh, shortly prior to last year's first year or startup. And uh, I followed it a lot last year, and it was it was something that I was interested in. Uh, and uh, then uh, you know things kind of came that way where uh, you know it was time for me to to try something new in hockey, and uh, this league seemed to be a fit. So uh, I I, uh, I think we mutually reached out to each other, me and Jamie, and we we talked, and uh, kind of things started to come together, and and uh, and here we are now. Yeah, it's, it's kind of funny sometimes how those things work. I know last year at the beginning of Washoe when there was five teams, it was really, you know, you hit the ground and you're already moving. Um, does it kind of feel that way for you guys a little bit, uh, starting into a league that's already gone through their first year? Um, I, I mean, this is the third uh, team I've owned. I owned uh, a couple other junior teams. Okay. And uh, so, so coming into and, and adapting to new business models and, and – uh, and different rules and, and, you know, uh, different methods about how people want to go about, uh, how they do their business honestly is, uh, is not new to me. And, right. uh, I, you know, I'm very, I was very pleased and, and very accepting of, of how they do their things here. So it's, uh, it seems to be working out. I mean, uh, you know, there's a lot to do yet, but, uh, right. we're getting there. It's yeah. A, I mean, it's, it's crazy though, how fast the, the world, wor the world moves, you know what I mean? Cause we are only a short, couple weeks like a week and a half away from the season opening weekend um you guys will open at home on saturday october the first when you guys take on another expansion team the dell high flames when you think of that like how how cool is that to be able to say with all the hard work you guys have done to get to this point is it sorry repeat that again sorry i was just saying like you guys are opening against dell high another yeah. expansion team so how exciting is that, knowing all the hard work you've done to get to this point, and now you're opening the season? I mean, we're beyond excited about it. Uh, you know, we've, uh, we're down to our last few cuts. Uh, we're practicing a couple times a week right now, and uh, we're at the point where uh, all the guys that have, that have signed already um, are excited. They're, you know, they're, they've got their group chats and they're talking to each other every day and all day long. And, and the whole idea of, uh, of having a family and a team is, uh, really coming together the way we've hoped it would. And, and, you know, so, uh, we couldn't be more pleased and more excited down this way. Um, we're excited to open up against, uh, Delhi and, uh, you know, I think it's going to be great for Tilbury. It's going to be great for, uh, the Washel and, and uh, hopefully uh, great for all the expansion teams to, uh, you know, to, to really do the same with their communities as well. Well, absolutely. And the community is a big thing. I mean, can you, can you speak a little bit to the reception that you've gotten in the community of Tilbury? Like, are they, are they excited? Um, you know, what's the reaction been? There's, well, there's certainly a lot of talk there. Uh, I mean, we'll see how, how many tickets we sell on opening night, but uh but I expected a good turnout. I think, uh, you know, from, from what I understand, it's, it's, uh, it might be, it might be a sellout. Oh, it's, perfect. It's far off your say. So we're excited. Uh, the, the community is very excited. I've, you know, going through the sponsorship process, uh, we, we've had just nothing but positive responses from all the, the smaller businesses all the way through to the major corporations and factories in town there. So it's, it's been wonderful. Well, that's great. That's great, Joe. And I'm really happy, obviously, to hear that for your guys' sake, because that is the big thing. And that's how a hockey team, hockey organization locally runs is through their community support and outreach. So if you guys are getting that much support right away, that's that's huge, Joe. Well, I, I think it's one of those things that uh, Tilbury has been missing it and been wanting it for uh, a good 25, 30 years. So 
it's, it's something uh, that uh, is long overdue for them and, and they deserve it. So absolutely uh, excited that's, to step. No, that's, that's great to hear Joe. And uh, I mean, uh, you guys are going to be playing all your games at the Tilbury arena on 49 bond Avenue. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, yeah. perfect. Excellent. And um, like I've never actually personally seen this arena. Um, have you witnessed games there? Like can the building get electric if it's full? Uh they, uh, I've never been there, but I've, I've only heard, uh, people talk about while well, they had the, the original bluebirds back in the, in the early seventies, late sixties, early seventies. Right. And from what I was told about that, they really supported that team. And, uh, they had a junior C team in the early nineties. And, and I, I heard that, uh, the community really supported that one too. And, and they've had a few missed chances on getting another junior C team back again. Right. And, uh, you know, the upset and the, the you know, excitement and the disappointment, and the excitement and the disappointment. Uh, finally, that uh, I think it's all, you know, it's all coming together for everybody, uh, you know, on both sides of uh, mm -hmm. us as the hockey group and the uh, and the ownership and and uh, hockey side of things. And as well as the uh, fan side and the, you know, and, and the community itself. So I, it's just, it's a good situation. It seems to be the, you know, the, the, it's the right time, right place. And, and we're, we're, we really think that uh, this is going to be a good marriage there in Tilbury. Absolutely. I, 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 I'm, I'm definitely stoked for you guys. I got to tell you the Tilbury Bluebirds logo is one of the best I've ever seen. So kudos on that. Um, I don't know. Do you, did you have a hand much in the uh, design process or, or who can you credit uh, for that? Well, I, I kind of laid out the concept and then we, we had our graphic designer, uh, uh, tweak the, tweak the edges on it. So okay. it, uh, you know, it, yeah, it was one of those things, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I, I like to have a hand in, in pretty much everything we do here. Over here. So, you know, making sure that things are right and they're the way we like it. So I, I'm glad you like the logo. I think it's, I uh, I think it's going to go, it's going to go nice on the, uh, you know, we were, we we're wearing the uh, Seattle Kraken uh, colors. Okay. The color scheme. That's nice. That's real That's sharp. And really uh, come together nice. And I, I don't think there's a, uh, another team there in the league that'll, that'll have that. So. No, it's, it's going to look cool. Like some of the color schemes are just excellent, right? Like, I mean, in, in Strathroy, for example, with the jets, they got like a Philadelphia Flyers thing going on, which is yeah. really cool. Big yeah. fan of the orange, right? And yeah. I mean, now and Alora kind of got that Washington Capitals vibe. So, you yeah. know, like it, it's just, it's really cool to see these different concepts. And then obviously with Delhi, they just look like the Calgary Flames, which is uh, kind of really neat as well. Which like that great. vintage Calgary Flames, too, not like new, but, you know, very yeah, vintage. Yeah, 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 so it's yeah. super cool. Um, so, in for you, uh, Joe, like what it like, obviously, commitment is a big part of any team's success, no matter which year they're in. Um, how have you, like, have you stressed this to your team that you guys have got to be committed to be successful? Well, we've got, uh, we've got great leadership already okay. and, uh, you know, we got it, we got ended up with a core group of guys that have been playing together for a few years now and, in uh, in other leagues. And, and so, you know, the, the, that's there, um, and, uh, they're leading the way with the other guys and some of the younger guys that are on their way in um that uh you know this is real hockey this isn't mm -hmm. uh this isn't just a beer league i mean we had an open tryout for all the beer league guys that wanted to come and play and try mm -hmm. out and all the junior guys that wanted to come out and try out uh and we were left with uh you know it was a lot of guys thought it was going to be a cakewalk and they just couldn't cut it so right um you know we've got a great great squad uh very talented team we're fast we're tough uh and uh, we just, uh, I just got word about, you know, 20 minutes ago that uh, we've got a couple key pieces that are coming in now. Um, okay. They got let go from other teams and, uh, you know, we'll expect them to come in and join us on Wednesday at practice. And so, I mean, it, it's uh, the commitment levels there, the compete levels there. Uh, these guys play, uh, you know, they, they play hard hockey. So I'm excited to see them on the ice and let them do their thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, uh, I think we're ready for it. And I think the guys will be ready come October 1st. I, I think that's just, you know, um, they're, they're, I mean, they're ready to go with those guys. I mean, if we could play tomorrow, I bet you they would. So. Right. Right. Yeah. No, that that's fair. Um, no, and like, obviously, like I said, anytime you get expansion teams coming into a league, you always just really intrigued by them and determines what they do. 
um, you know, if they're successful, if they struggle out of the gate, if they come together really quickly, I think that can define a season. Do you have any sort of expectations going into this or are you kind of just keeping it loose and saying, you know what, guys, just go out there and try your hardest? Well, I mean, uh, I think we're going to have a strong team. I, I think any league, it doesn't matter what, what league you're in. Uh, it's a, they're hard to win. Championships are hard to win. So it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's not fair to talk that at this point and sure. uh nor do they hand out trophies in uh, september <laughs> no so uh but on the, we'll be very competitive i think we're uh i think we'll, i think we'll be a top half team i think we uh we have the capabilities to to you know challenge the upper upper echelon of this whole uh, circuit mm -hmm. um i would be disappointed if we are a bottom house team Fair but enough. Uh, I mean, nonetheless, uh, you know, I think we've got uh, as pretty much as good as we could possibly get around here for for right now. So, uh, you know, given the point system and the uh, and and the league's layout of what you can do, I think uh, I think we've done fairly well for ourselves. Well, that's that's great. Uh, I'm glad to hear that, Joe. And uh, like the thing is, for me, and having looked at this league last year, only five teams. It's tough to find a very good competitive balance when you're playing so many like the same team so many times um yeah. i think with nine teams stretched out i think it'll allow for more competitiveness and a more kind of even even balanced standings uh, if you will um you fault you said you followed this league last year what was there anything that stood out or impressed you more than uh others well i mean uh a the way that the fact that they were able to get through a year with uh, as a startup and mm -hmm. uh during, during a pandemic is that was a big thing, you know, right. and how, how they handled the pandemic and how they, uh, it doesn't seem like it affected them all that well or all that bad. And and they were able to, to just plow through seamlessly. I mean, I was uh, working with another team in a different league and the, the it was handled completely different there. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it, it really impressed me. I like the way they're, they're doing things over here and, and I'm excited to be a part of this. And now, uh, I am not gauging my team what I what I did uh, this year and how I wanted to do things this year based on what they did last year because I think the growth in this league is going to be uh, the, you know is going to be a step up. It's going to be. I agree with that. Um, I think teams are are uh, are going to be a lot better than they were last year. Well, I, I think uh, you know I think it's going to be very balanced and even mm -hmm. um, and I. I my my guess is is that uh, there there's a lot of guys coming into the league now that wouldn't have played last year and uh, you know and I think even next year it'll it'll be a, even another step up as far as caliber goes so um, you know as on that end I think I, I think we're you know I, I I've either overstepped it or I'm just on on point so it's one of the two so, but I I don't think I understepped it and uh, you know. Um, I, you know, I, I'm just excited to get started and see what the work that we've done over the course of the summer uh, on the hockey side and business side to see see if it comes together and and uh, and how it plays itself out. So we'll we'll, we'll learn from our mistakes either way. Well, I mean, that's that's just it. I mean, you can't really gauge on how much work you've done and if it's going to pay off until you start playing games for real against other opponents and just to see where you're at in terms of a measuring stick for sure, Joe, that's, that's absolutely no question about it. My last question to you, Joe, before I let you go, um, you, you know, as a guy who's been involved in hockey and has seemed to be very passionate about the game and, and different aspects, what is it about it that just keeps you coming back? Like, what is it that you love about this game the most? Well, um, I, I think I got to say it's the cold air of the rinks. I think if, you know, if I get, uh, if I start getting climbing the ladder and getting into rinks where I, I have to wear a t-shirt to be out there, it's too hot. And I think I've got a problem. I better scale it back. So sure. I think, uh, honestly, being around the arena, uh, around the locker room, uh, with like-minded, uh, young men who, who enjoy the game as much as I do, uh, it just, you know, it, it's, it's one of those, uh, getaways in life that a lot of people might not understand you know right. so um there's nothing like it and and that's what keeps me coming back 
I love the answer, Joe. That's that's fantastic. Uh, Tilbury Bluebirds, they open the regular season against the Delhi Flames on Saturday, October the 1st from the Tilbury Arena. We've been speaking with the general manager and man of many hats, uh, Joe Byrne. Joe, this has been outstanding. I appreciate you coming on and doing this, and uh, we'll touch base throughout the course of the season, okay? Thank you very much. All right. Uh, that was uh, that was unbelievable, guys. Uh, you know what? Great uh, first episode of this Western Ontario Super Rocket League podcast season preview show. Jam-packed, very long, uh, but a lot of good stuff from every each individual that we spoke to. And uh, you know what? It's a great way to kick off, again, uh, this the sophomore season of the uh, Western Ontario Super Hockey League. It really is. And uh, we uh, just want to uh, thank some people here. I want to thank uh, Jamie Petrie, uh, Western Ontario Super Hockey League president and uh, member of the Strapper Fighting Irish. I want to thank Mitch Scott. I want to thank jo uh, Bill Ryan. I want to thank Scott Elkins of the Strathroy Jets. I want to thank Brett Case of the Alvin St. Killer Bees, Jeff Richards of the Aaron Blitz, Jeff Sear of the Plasville Lakers, and Joe Byrne of the Tilbury Bluebirds. Uh, great to have them all on. Uh, great to speak with them, and we look uh, forward to catching up with them and various members of their teams throughout the course of the season on this Western Ontario Super Rocket League podcast show. Again, once again, guys, just so that you know, we have a couple weekends coming up of importance. The first one is the preseason weekend, which starts this weekend. Uh, that goes uh, first game in Stratford uh, at the William Ulm Memorial Arena. The Killer Bees are in town, Alvinston. Uh, that's a 4.30 start in Stratford. Second game of the doubleheader on the uh, exhibition weekend is the Laura Rocks into Tilsonburg to take on the Thunder. 7.30, that one gets underway at the Tilsonburg Community Center. It's also Rib Fest weekend. Don't forget that. So bring your appetites. Uh, the third game in the preseason, Killer Bees, Alvinston. Again, they travel to Strathroy to play at the home of the Jets, Strath uh, Gemini Sportsplex. That's the new arena for them. Uh, that goes on Saturday, October the 1st at 4 o'clock. Then we get into the real action. Uh, the regular season gets underway. Banner raising night in Alora, Alora Rocks, and the Aaron Blitz. That one goes at 8.30 Friday, September the 30th at Alora and District Community Center. As well, uh, that opening weekend, we have our uh, two uh, two more expansion teams taking uh, getting their season underway. The Delhi Flames and the Tilbury Bluebirds. That goes at the Tilbury Arena uh, at on Saturday, October the 1st, and that goes at 7.30. So pretty unbelievable stuff there, guys, just in case you forgot. Uh, Andrew Rogers, the host of the Western Ontario Super Hockey League pa uh, podcast, back with you guys, and I'm so psyched to be here. And uh, again, once again, I want to thank Jamie Petrie and Bill Ryan, because without them, this wouldn't happen. And uh, I'm just so relieved and so uh, honored to be back and uh, bringing you guys these podcasts. So thank you very much for watching and uh, enduring through part one and part two. And uh, we'll see you again uh, next week for uh, to give you an idea or to give you a wrap on, I guess, the first uh, weekend in the Washel uh, for preseason and get you teed up for the regular season and banner racing night in Alora a week from Friday. Uh, great to have you guys here and great to have you guys watching. And uh, we'll sign off for now. Andrew Rogers saying so long uh, for the Western Ontario Super Hockey League podcast. Thanks.